Today in this video, we speak about uh, Chomsky hierarchy. As usual, before getting into this video, I request all my viewers to subscribe, share and comment in my videos. Also give a like. That will motivate me to do more videos. Okay, today let us uh, see what is Chomsky hierarchy. Before seeing uh, what is Chomsky hierarchy, let us try to know about uh, Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky is a professor at MIT since 1995. He is a linguist. He is a social critic as well as philosopher and cognitive scientist. Why we are talking about him today? Because his research outcome is very crucial for the subject what we are studying in all these videos, what I am giving in the playlist. So what is his research? He has considered all the languages that exist in this world, taken into account all the languages, languages of any form, any form in the sense the language may be only the spoken language or the language may be spoken by many people as well as it has its own alphabet set. I mean it has its own scripts form or sometimes the language may be a sign language. He has considered all these languages for his research and also he believed that developing a language and the way we communicate, the human beings, the way uh, we communicate, it's an innate quality of human being. He said that and he strongly believed that uh, the way we try to understand, the way we create the science, the way we created the scripts, the way we speak, it is all already hardwired in the brain. So his belief led his research and as a result of this, he developed four mathematical models. So his research and its outcome says that any language that exists in this world can be fit into any one of these four mathematical models. So what are those four mathematical models? Those four mathematical models are nothing but the formal grammars, what we are studying in the subject theory of computation. Okay, I hope all of you are uh, seeing this diagram. Uh, this diagram is like, uh, uh, if, uh, if you have the knowledge of set theory, you can easily understand this diagram. See, the innermost concentric circle is type 3, then we have type 2, type 1, type 0. Type 3 is nothing but a regular grammar. The language corresponding to the regular grammar is regular language. Type 2 is context-free grammar. Corresponding language is context-free language. Type 1 is context-sensitive grammar. And the corresponding language is context-sensitive language. And type 0 is unrestricted grammar and the corresponding language is recursively enumerable language. So this is the outcome of his research. He says that any language that exists in this world can be fit into any one of this uh, mathematical model. For example, all South Indian languages are context sensitive. English is context free. Even Sanskrit is also context free. Just I'm giving an example. And if you observe the circles, you can understand one more thing. Type 0 is a superset of all these languages. Type 3 is a subset of type 2. Type 2 is a subset of type 1. Type 1 is a subset of type 0. These are called the formal grammars. In uh, the version of Noam Chomsky, it is the outcome of his research in which he developed four mathematical models where every language can be fit into this. Okay. Correspondingly, we have automata which recognizes these grammars or these languages. We have finite state machine which recognizes type 3. We have push down automata which recognizes type 2 or context free grammar. We have linear bounded automata which recognizes type 1. And we have Turing machine which recognizes type 0. We can understand in other sense also. Turing machine recognizes all these languages. Turing machine recognizes type 0. It means in turn it recognizes type 1, type 2, type 3. Because type 1, type 2, type 3 are the subset of type 0. Similarly, linear bounded automata recognizes type 1, type 2 and type 3. Pushdown automata recognizes type 2 and type 3. FSM is nothing but finite state machine or finite automata that recognizes type 3. Okay, now let us try to understand what is a formal grammar. 
A formal grammar is defined by four tuples. In general, I am giving the definition for grammar. Then we see the individually the definition for the grammars. Grammar is defined by four tuples. V, sigma, R, S. In some other textbooks, they may follow like V, T, P, S. It might be, the letter might be different, but it contains these four tuples only. What is V? Set of variables. These variables always, when we write the grammar rules, we use the capital letter. Sigma or T. In some other textbooks, they are represented by the letter T. It is nothing but the set of terminal symbol. Normally, the terminal symbol, we write it in small letters or lower case. R is a set of production rule. S is the start symbol. And this S is a variable. S belongs to V. So, these are the four tuples that define grammar. And these four tuples are common for all the formal grammars except the format of the production rule. Right. In general, the production rule is of this format. Alpha derives beta. Alpha is available in the left hand side. Then we have an arrow mark. Uh, beta we have on the right hand side. The meaning of the production rule is in place of alpha, we can replace it by beta or alpha can be rewritten as beta. Okay, now we see the grammar one by one. First, let us see type 0 grammar. Type 0 grammar, the other name is unrestricted grammar. This type 0 grammar, the corresponding language is recursively enumerable language which is recognized by Turing machines. I'll just write the name of the automata here. <coughs> So, the grammar definition remains the same. The format of the production rule is also the same. Alpha can be rewritten as beta. But what is alpha? What is beta? Alpha is the union of variable and the terminal. Here plus is given. Plus means positive closure, one or more. On the right hand side, once again, we have V union T, the whole star. Star means zero or more. In place of T, some of the textbooks use sigma. Sigma and T, one and the same. I have written in both the ways. Since I have defined the set of terminals as sigma, let us uh, continue to use the same sigma. So, what is the meaning of this V union sigma whole to the power of plus? On the left hand side, we can have a combination of variable and the terminal. On the right hand side also, we can have a combination of variable and the terminal like this. So, I will give one more uh, rule also. I can have a single variable. I can have a terminal and the uh, variable combination like this. So, these kind of rules are possible. The only difference is epsilon can appear on the right hand side of the production rule. But epsilon won't appear on the left hand side of the production rule. How do I say this? Because of this star closure. Star closure means 0 or more. 0 means in terms of automata theory it is epsilon. See variables we are using capital letter. Terminals we are representing using the small letters. Okay now let us see what is type 1 grammar. Again, type 1 grammar, every grammar in general, it is defined by four tuples. So, I have written against all the grammars here in common. Now, individually, we see the format of the production rule. With respect to type 1, again, alpha derives beta. Alpha belongs to variable and the terminal whole to the power of plus. Beta also belongs to the same. V union sigma whole to the power of plus. Plus means positive closure. I have already mentioned about this in my previous video in the basic concepts of automata theory. Positive closure means one or more. So, epsilon neither appears on the left hand side nor appears on the right hand side. It's a epsilon free grammar. This is very important. Epsilon neither appears on the left hand side nor appears on the right hand side. Okay, and there is one more condition. The length of alpha must be less than or at least equal to the length of beta. 
the left hand side length must be less than the length of beta or it can be equal to the length of beta. So this is the format of type 1 grammar. Let me try to give an example but uh, the examples whatever I am giving does not carry any meaning. So on the left hand side I can have uh, symbols or the production rule like this or I can write like this a a where the combination of terminal and the variable and uh, some combination of variable and the terminal on the right hand side. Right now you can understand the variables are represented using the caps and the terminals are represented using the lower case. Right. Now let us see what is type 2 grammar. The type 2 grammar is nothing but context free grammar. This context free grammar generates context free language and context free language can be recognized by push down automata. Already I have told all these things. Right. Again the production rule is of the format alpha derives beta. What is alpha? Alpha belongs to variable. Just one V I have written. It means only a single variable we can have on the left hand side of the production rule. What is on the right hand side? Beta belongs to V union sigma the whole star. So what is the format of the production rule? On the left hand side we can have a single variable. On the right hand side we can have a any length of variables and the terminals. Or sometimes we can have epsilon also. Because star is there. Star means 0 or more. If 0 comes, it means it includes epsilon also. I can write some more examples. S derives A, 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 B, A. So here also we can have any length of combination of variable and the terminal. And the production rule includes epsilon also. So this is type 2. Now let us see what is type 3. Type 3 grammar is nothing but regular grammar. The corresponding language is regular language and type 3 can be recognized by finite state machine or finite automata. Right. So what is the format of the production rule here? On the left hand side we can have a single variable. On the right hand side you can have W B. B is once again written in caps so you can understand it as a variable. What is this W? W is nothing but a string of terminal. R, the format can be like this. See here, the B appears in the first character, as a first character on the right hand side, in the beta part I am telling. So, both the formats are allowed. If B appears as a last character on the right hand side of the production rule, then you can call it as right linear. If beta appears as a first character, then we can call it as a left linear grammar. So in general this is a format of the production rule for every grammar. Grammar means it contains four tuples. A grammar can be defined with the help of four tuples and each grammar differs in the format of the production rule. I hope you have understood and you got a basic idea about the formal grammar. For any doubts you please comment in the comment section and for any queries any further clarification, please do comment. Thank you.